Hello and welcome to another episode of Underworld Diary. If you have been enjoying the stories told on this channel, feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to help the channel grow. In today's episode, we are going to delve into one of the largest cases of political corruption involving organized crime, the case of Mayor Vincent Buddy C.N.C. The former mayor of Providence had deep ties to organized crime in the region, reportedly actively participating in kidnapping and assault while in office, accepting and delivering bribes, and ultimately being convicted on racketeering charges. Despite being seen as a major organized crime figure himself, C.N.C. surprisingly maintained the support of his community throughout his life. Some of his supporters pointed to the more behind-the-scenes corruption of other politicians, viewing C.N.C.'s misconduct as just a more public example of what others were doing. This support enabled the mayor to secure a second term after being arrested, representing an unprecedented combination of crime, politics, and public support that hadn't been seen for years. Vincent Buddy Cianci was born in April 1941 in the Cranston region of Rhode Island. He was raised by two Italian-American parents, with his father, also named Vincent Cianci, being a respected doctor in the area. C.N.C. grew up in an upper-middle-class neighborhood throughout his early years, with parents who prioritized education above all else. Starting out in public school, C.N.C. would switch over to privatized education upon entering his high school years. During his time in high school, C.N.C. would be involved in a multitude of sports but would primarily focus on and excel in wrestling. Developing a well-rounded high school resume, complete with extracurricular and academic success, C. Ancy would look to head off to college and follow in his father's footsteps to become a doctor. Taking the first step in that process, C. Ancy attended Fairfield University in Connecticut. Here, his career path would take a direct change, either due to academic struggles or lack of interest, as C. Ancy decided he no longer wanted to pursue medical school, instead opting to refocus on political science. After completing his bachelor's degree, he pursued a master's degree in political science at Villanova University before going on to obtain his law degree from Marquette University Law School. After being sworn into the Rhode Island Bar Association, C. Ancy enlisted in the Army rather than begin his practice as a lawyer. He served in active duty from 1966 until 1969, reaching the rank of second lieutenant. Upon returning from his Army service, C. Ancy pursued his career as a lawyer. Early in his career, Cianci's ability to make key connections was illustrated when he was hired by the then Attorney General Herbert F. DeSimone to work alongside him as an assistant. This extremely important position saw Cianci assist the Attorney General in prosecuting organized crime and corruption throughout Rhode Island. Able to gain first-hand experience in these high-profile cases, in conjunction with practicing law on his own, Cianci began to build up his reputation as a capable anti-corruption lawyer heading into the 1970s. With this growing status within Rhode Island's legal system, C.N.C. got his first taste of the public spotlight when he was put on the prosecution's case in their efforts to convict the infamous Mafia boss Raymond Patriarca. The 1972 prosecution of reputed Mafia boss Raymond Patriarca was a novelty for many in the Providence area. Patriarca was known by many as the ruler of the underworld but had managed to avoid prosecution throughout most of his life. Seeing Patriarca stand trial this year brought massive media and public interest, as the polarizing godfather faced life imprisonment for the murder of Willie Marfio. The trial was back and forth for a majority of its proceedings until C. Ancy and the prosecution dedicated themselves to bringing up their star witness for the case, John Red Kelly. Kelly stated that Patriarca had ordered him to orchestrate the killing, even detailing a place and time where he met with Patriarca to discuss it. Following this testimony, C. Ancy and the prosecution felt as if the case was sealed until the defense brought up their star witness, a well-respected priest from the neighborhood. The priest testified that he met with his longtime friend Raymond Patriarca on the day of the alleged meeting, directly contradicting Kelly's testimony. With this testimony, C. Ancy and the prosecution team frantically looked for a way to counter these claims. They caught a break when they discovered that the priest was conducting a baptism on the day and time he said he met with Patriarca. C. Ancy and the team flew out to talk to the family about the baptism to gather evidence that it took place. After obtaining this evidence, the team flew back just in time to confront the priest with this information while on the stand. By doing this, the team thought they effectively crippled the defense's testimony. However, the jury surprisingly returned with a not guilty verdict later, citing disbelief in elements of the prosecution's witness's testimony. Despite not getting the verdict he wanted, the case put C. Ancy in the spotlight of Providence, a feeling that C. Ancy was said to enjoy. 
After his efforts in this trial, he became the prosecutor of the Rhode Island Attorney General's Anti-Corruption Strike Force, where he stayed for a year before deciding that he wanted to run for mayor. With his growing public image, C. Ancy dove into the mid-70s with a new goal of becoming the mayor of Providence. Using his backing as the anti-corruption prosecutor, C. Ancy ran his campaign on the basis of being the anti-corruption candidate. Despite this public sentiment, C. Ancy soon discovered the backroom dealings truly needed when it came to politics in Providence at the time. Providence was a major Democratic city, with the mayor of the city being a part of the Democratic Party since 1941. This stranglehold that Democratic candidates had on the city was mainly due to a massive political machine run by powerful Democratic politician Larry McGarry. Seen as the behind-the-scenes puppet master, the backing of the McGarry machine would often determine the outcome of a specific candidate winning or losing the election. Despite this massive political machine, C. Ancy chose to run as a Republican, creating an uphill battle for him. Despite the differing party alignment, C. Ancy still had an opportunity to gain the backing of the McGarry machine following the splitting of support for two different Democratic candidates. With the McGarry candidate ultimately losing, McGarry met with C. Ancy, choosing to support a Republican candidate for the first time in decades, creating the infamous Democrats for C. Ancy campaign. With this backing and his popular anti-corruption platform, C. Ancy started to gain major traction in his bid for mayor. However, the incumbent mayor, James Dorley Jr., was still slightly favored heading into the election. This is where C. Ancy's alleged step into corruption began, as he was said to have sat down with members of the Patriarca family in order to gain aid in securing votes for the upcoming election. He later spoke about the alleged involvement with organized crime to secure votes, saying, The question is, do you want to sell yourself out? Well, I didn't sell myself out. You have to make arrangements. With the alleged backroom dealings in place, CNC broke the Democratic hold in Providence, winning the election by 709 votes. Stepping into the mayor's office, CNC hit the ground running. He was seen at pretty much every public event in the region, giving speeches, as well as talking one-on-one -on -one with many people he was sworn to serve. While he was out on these public outings, C. Ancy also allegedly kept up his deals with those who helped him get into office. Seeing C. Ancy give multiple high-ranking positions to alleged mafia members and associates, he had multiple convicted felons step into government positions. This was on top of alleged contracts that he would send the way of people connected to the criminal world. Despite going back on his campaign promise to stop corruption, C. Ancy's public approval grew in his first few months in power. However, C. Ancy already had ambitions for more, and he quickly looked to use his strong standing within the Republican Party to gain more power and run for governor of Rhode Island. However, this campaign quickly imploded after the financial issues plaguing Providence were exposed, effectively ending C. Ancy's hopes of becoming governor. It later came out that C. Ancy originally intended to ignore the financial issues facing his city, pushing them off to the next mayor after he became governor. After this failed effort, C. Ancy returned to his position as mayor with the city slowly turning against him. With increasing financial issues combined with growing tension with the union, C. Ancy faced uncertainty with another mayoral election coming up. This issue reached a fever pitch when the garbage workers in the city decided to go on strike over failed union negotiations. This strike saw trash left rotting on the streets throughout C. Ancy city. To combat this, C. Ancy used his political power and alleged connections to organized crime to go against the union. C. Ancy fired all government garbage workers, hiring outside private companies to take over these jobs. These jobs were alleged to be given to some companies connected to organized crime in return for aid in breaking the union. This situation led to the infamous moment where C. Ancy put police officers armed with shotguns on each of the privately owned garbage trucks that went out to collect trash that month. C. Ancy's handling of this situation endeared himself well with potential voters, as they saw the switch to privatized garbage collection as a good financial decision and were said to like his hard stance on unions. This is what most credit with leading to C. Ancy's re-election as an independent in 1982. However, his second term as mayor would be cut short following one of the biggest political scandals Providence ever saw. After winning another term as mayor, C. Ancy continued much of the same in his early years, attending public events and making speeches. However, despite his public image, C. Ancy was said to be struggling with personal issues over the years. This included the divorce from his longtime wife Sheila. This divorce is alleged to be the cause of the massive scandal that occurred in 1984. 
That year, emotionally distraught, CNC learned of an affair his then ex-wife Sheila had with a contractor based out of Rhode Island named Raymond DeLeo. Infuriated about this alleged affair, CNC called over friends to discuss the issue. These friends included a police officer, a judge, and a former attorney. They were unable to console CNC, who then called the contractor DeLeo and ordered him to come over to the house. DeLeo, who denied having an affair with CNC's wife, decided to show up at the mayor's house to talk things over. However, upon arriving at the house, he was tied to a chair where CNC repeatedly struck DeLeo, threatened to kill him multiple times, hit him with a log from the fireplace, and burned him with a cigarette. The assault on DeLeo continued for hours until ultimately ending with CNC demanding that DeLeo pay him $500,000 while threatening his life. DeLeo, agreeing to pay, left the house and eventually went to the authorities. This incident led to an extremely publicized trial where CNC faced charges for extortion, kidnapping, and assault. During the trial, CNC admitted to assaulting DeLeo, affirming that he acted out in an emotional state due to the alleged affair his ex-wife had with DeLeo. With details of the assault coming out, CNC moved to plead no contest to these charges, resulting in him receiving the extremely lenient sentence of a five-year suspended sentence. This meant he served zero jail time but became a convicted felon, which barred him from continuing as mayor, resulting in him stepping down from the position in 1984. After his assault case, C. Ancy did not turn away from the public eye, spending the next five years as a radio talk show host where he gave his opinion on a variety of topics affecting the people of Providence. Here, he also began to implement his eventual slogan for his campaign, he never stopped caring about Providence. Despite the success he saw on this show, C. Ancy ultimately decided to run for mayor again in 1991. Seeing an opportunity to gain the necessary votes with two other candidates splitting the votes, C. Ancy joined the race. With the other two candidates pulling votes away from each other, C. Ancy was able to secure just enough votes to become the mayor once again. Returning to his old position, C. Ancy sought to win over support in the first years by again attending public events in the area and heavily investing in the downtown core. Over this term, he pushed for Providence to become a city of artists by focusing development into the arts and entertainment district. With his public persona and plan to revitalize the city, CNC became extremely popular in Providence, which many said went to his head. As his term continued, he was alleged to have accepted multiple bribes, shut down businesses due to personal vendettas, and fined and threatened to close a club simply for not recognizing him when he visited. Corruption during this time spread rapidly throughout the office, leading to a major investigation by the FBI named Operation Plunder Dome. Operation Plunder Dome utilized undercover police officers, wiretaps, and informants to convict CNC and his administration of corruption that was seen as an open secret. However, the operation was not as simple as many in law enforcement first thought, as CNC was extremely cautious when discussing anything that was not above board. It has been alleged that CNC, when accepting bribes, audibly said, no, 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 as he put the envelope in his pocket. This cautious attitude worked well for CNC as he was never caught on film or wiretap accepting a bribe. However, the same could not be said for his associates, as many were caught taking bribes, including a damning piece of video evidence showing Frank A. Carenti accepting a bribe. With the surrounding evidence, the government felt they had enough to charge C. Ancy and the rest of his administration in 2001. C. Ancy, alongside nine of his associates, was arrested on charges including racketeering, conspiracy, extortion, witness tampering, and mail fraud. C. Ancy himself faced trial for 12 charges associated with this. However, without him being seen directly on film or heard on wiretap accepting a bribe, C. Ancy was acquitted on all but two charges, racketeering conspiracy and conspiracy to run a corrupt criminal enterprise. For these charges, C. Ancy was sentenced to a five-year prison term in 2002. C. Ancy served this term with relative ease before being paroled in 2007. After being paroled, the former mayor appeared on multiple TV and radio stations as a political commentator before attempting to run for mayor again in 2014. C. Ancy, a two-time convict, lost this race handily to the Democratic candidate. Following this failed attempt, C. Ancy lived the rest of his life away from the public eye until 2016 when he passed away after a years-long battle with cancer. The career of CNC is polarizing when it comes to politics in Providence, as he was and still is looked upon favorably by the people who live there. Seen as a politician who cared about his city, many have attributed his crimes to just a part of doing business in Providence. 
However, others view him as just another corrupt politician in a city plagued by corruption. Thank you for watching another episode of Underworld Diary. If you enjoy the stories told on the channel, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. If there are any topics you would like to see covered in future videos, feel free to leave a comment down below, if not, I will see you next time with another story from the Underworld.